What's up, Liron here, and today we're gonna look at works by Titus Brzozowski, and I think I pronounced it correctly. Um, he's a Polish watercolor painter, a contemporary artist, and his work is fantastic. It's very rare that you find, for me at least personally, an artist that works that way, and I'm gonna show you his works and you'll better understand what I'm talking about. On the one hand, he has crazy uh, skill technique, and very good control of the medium, but on the second hand, his imagination, his work is kind of surrealistic. Um, it has a lot of anchoring in reality, but it takes it far beyond that. So much imagination and so much uniqueness and sp special different elements, and you're gonna see the more paintings we look at. So with that being said, let's get started looking at the paintings. So I wanted to start with this because it's a perfect example of the kind of work you can expect to see from him. Um, it's an urban uh, cityscape, which makes me love his work even more. But then we have these surrealistic elements. So you have huge teapots here, just laying down on the street and it looks beautiful uh, and you'll recognize a lot of and of, of course uh, uh, another thing that impresses me if you know me well which is rare to see is the use of primary colors so many primary colors here and the blue is the red yellow and he kind of sets up the yellow in the middle because that's a very um, light and strong color and warm and then more towards the edges you get a bit more red and a bit more blue and I think that's intentional uh, a lot of the things in his work seem intentional. Uh, I also love the the messiness of his shadows, in which they're very well organized, but they do have drops of other colors in them, which works really well. By the way, notice, I forgot how this game is called, but the brick here, it's this game that you match the different uh, numbers. Uh, and then let's see here at the bottom, that you can see the fewer details and the cars and this tram. Uh, very uh, immediately you can tell kind of an Eastern European architecture um, and I love it I love it let's see another one uh, here's oh this one is so so cool so once again a lot of plays of warms and cools which I always love but then if you look at the bottom you'll notice the buildings are very much not real and they have these bottom pillars that they stand on and then of course the people just walking by their day and who knows how you even enter these buildings and of course there are people in these buildings here you can see them with these parasols or umbrellas and uh, it's so cool just the the idea is so awesome I don't know I love it I love it because it's so uh, accurate and detailed and it is realistic but then it's surrealistic uh, so I love this kind of work uh, and his control of the medium is really really impressive uh, next up, okay, another pillar building, which I love. This one's uh, um, up top of uh, crops, you know, of fields or whatever. And it looks so good. And, and everything is very accurate in which, if you notice, the shadows are very accurate. You get this one shadow that goes... Uh, take a look at this pillar, for example. And hopefully you'll be able to tell. This pillar casts a shadow onto this building right here. Then it goes down to the ground continues goes up on this building i'm going to zoom in more so to make sure you can see goes left more up around the rooftop and continues it's so accurate and it's such a genius thing because obviously he wasn't using real reference for it so i could only imagine the amount of work it takes to produce such a painting both imaginative work and then also the actual uh, execution of it and the application of everything the, the shadows under the windows it's all very accurate the, this shadow cast by this tower obviously it could be based on a real building and it probably is but it's just so so beautiful and the fact that he control the, controls the washes and can keep them even is fantastic here's another one the color scheme here i don't like as much because it's too mm, messy for me uh, and two the greens i don't like them but if you look at it conceptually, it's it's a genius piece. The air condition is going to kill me. I'm going to make it a little uh, hotter. Um, so this is excellent. I love this. And, and notice how it's it really is a weird city structure. You have these small bridges. Then you have this area. Who knows what that is? Just a bunch of people there next to a building. You have these uh, hot air balloons. You have these, you know, the, these markings that you can find on walls in many different cities. I don't even know what they mean, but I think you can scan them. So you have all of these, so it's kind of relevant and it's, it's relatively new. Um, the work is relevant. It's very uh, contemporary in that regard. Uh, let's see what else we have here. This is one of my favorites. And again, you see these markings on the wall. And, um, 
and uh, TE, I don't know, I'm not sure what that means, but I love the, the dice here. Uh, die, the die, I love it. He has dices all across his uh, paintings, you'll see, and uh, the shadows. Again, this is something I cannot stress enough how even they are, despite being messy and having all of these splatters of paint, they're even in that, if you look back from afar, it looks like one big fluid uh, shape. Uh, which is really important to get the shadows to work right. So there is a lot of planning. I bet his drawings are very accurate uh, because to paint like this, you have to have a very accurate drawing uh, that really encapsulates. I'm going to turn that off. It really encapsulates all of the small details and, and everything. Look at the people. The people look so cool here as well. Uh, probably based on something real at the very least, but he does simplify them quite a lot, the shadows and everything. It looks so good. Um, so yeah, just excellent. This is one of my favorites. I I'll tell you why. Probably because of these, the intricacy of these shadows and the, the blue and then kind of the sienna or red here works so well. Let's see what else we have here. This, oh, this is really nice. I love it. Notice how it goes from uh, warm to then cool and then cooler around the perimeters, the outer perimeters of the painting. These rooftops here get really blue. And you have to th imagine him doing this in one go because it is fairly even. Uh, which I find fascinating. I will show you in just a moment some plays of warm and cool in the shadows. Here it's not as prevalent, but you'll see it again soon. Uh, but really, the technique to create such a thing, probably very slow, meticulous, and accurate. But then again, also, he has a lot of freedom in the way he switches and alternates with between colors, which is really impressive. There is this tower here, which is interesting, and there's a person there. Then again, you have this scannable code thing. And then one last thing I want you to notice is the cubes, the dice, dices, dice, I, I don't know how to say that, but you know, you see them here. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. One, four, 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 two, one, one. Okay, so ones, twos, and fours, uh, which is really cool. I'm going to show you another similar scene, kind of zoomed in, but it's not the same painting. I did look for it here and I couldn't find it. So it's a different piece. And then you have the trains and they're, they fit perfectly into the buildings, which is really, really cool. And uh, even when the washes aren't as even, they are quite even. So I think there's a, a lot of planning that went into creating these. Uh, and now we have a couple of last ones that I absolutely love. This is huge. And uh, I think it's also fairly accurate. It does seem to have some experience in maybe architecture, arch architectural background, because it all looks so darn good and accurate. And the fields, you know, here you can tell that you're looking at them more from above, but the more they recede into the distance, the angle shifts. Uh, so that's really, really cool. Um, what else was interesting here? The bridge, everything is accurate. Notice all the shadows, everything casts from here and there. It's so cool. And this is, uh, I'm, I'm sorry if I got this wrong, but maybe this is the Polish flag colors, though I'm not really good with flags. So I'll apologize in advance. Um, here, notice here, in this teeny tiny building top, you get a bit of blue and then a bit of red orange. And here you get in the shadow blue, yellow, blue, red, kind of pink, dark, violet. Uh, so you get a lot of variation there in the shadows and they all look like one big piece. So it's very easy on the eye because with this kind of painting, there are quite a lot of details. But if you simplify it properly for the viewer, it does become easier on the eyes. And you can find so many kind of inside jokes within these paintings and so many fun stuff. Like, for example, this road, why would it do that? Why would it spin like that? It's so funny with a bridge, maybe, or who knows what. So that's really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, I love this. And then I'm going to wrap up with two of my favorite works because they are kind of similar. Again, zoom in, zoom out. So here you have this huge neighborhood, so many details. Let's look at it from far for a moment, all of the trees and the buildings, and it's so well organized. And there's a lot of variation in the shadow as well. And in the next one, I'm going to show you something really cool. But here we have, again, teacups. So kind of uh, recurring motives or ideas in his work. Uh, we have a couple of people on the rooftops. Uh, did I not show you the one with the snowy rooftops? I'm going to check that near the end because there was another really cool one that I may have missed. Um, so yeah, uh, all of the ch chimneys cast these beautiful shadows. And then notice how rich, ri rich, rich, notice how rich these shadows are. I always confuse the E and I, like, you know, in English you have the rich and rich. So notice how rich these shadows are. 
around the trees, underground. It's all one big piece of shadow and you have to plan for that. You have to plan for that. And maybe he's using masking fluid, maybe he doesn't, I don't know, but it seems very deliberate. And then a bunch of people here and all of this from up top with the very tough um, um, perspective here because we have a three points perspective basically. All of these lines kind of recede to vanishing point to the right and all of these to vanishing point up front. And then finally we have all of these um, um, vertical lines that recede to an imaginary vanishing point in the bottom which is really hard to get especially when it's subtle and here it's very subtle one of my favorite buildings is actually this one at the very top uh, so really cool and let me show you another one this is zoomed in and what I love about this is notice how the, the dyes their shadows are you know yellow and then it turns into the blue or green yellow and then it turns into blue or green it's so good if you look at the chimneys as well and you have this person here just chilling, uh, you get this transition from yellow to red and blue. And notice how good that looks. Here as well you get it, yellow and then slowly brown and blue. This looks so darn good um, and it takes a lot of skill to create. Notice here, he even had some reflected light because what happens is the cube uh, reflects the yellow light on it and then it casts on the ground. So you have a bit of yellow on the ground here, a bit of yellow on the ground here, but where it's most noticeable is actually here. Notice this cube at the very bottom, so beautiful. And I think that's the, oh yeah, here another one. And yeah, that's the last one. So I'm gonna find that extra one maybe if I can. But notice these cool pianos with hot air balloons kind of flying in the air and uh, it's so good. The way he, controls your attention as the viewer is spectacular because if you notice uh, these are very sharp shapes it's very clear this piano shape this one this one but then in the distance it kind of becomes muted and dim and you don't pay as much attention to it that's obvious because it's kind of the center of interest but then he also selectively decides where to place more importance on so for example you have this these two towers they are very well defined but then the more you go down this building, you can barely see any of the details. It's just dim windows. Same for this building as well. It starts very sharp and clear. And then with the more it goes down, the, more, the messier it gets and the shape becomes more complex. And then it's just so much playing that goes into this. I cannot begin to imagine. And all of these trams that go into the distance. So good. This reminds me of Prague. Maybe it's Prague. I don't know. Um, but it's so darn beautiful. <laughs> Such a good work. Uh, now I'm going to find the last one if I don't. Apologies. Okay, so I was able to find it luckily and I don't know why. I was sure I saved it, but check this out. Tons of people partying on the roofs uh, and that's so cool. And, and even the effect like this, he has this, I don't know, like um, this old lantern kind of thing. And he holds it and he used the backgrounds to create a flashlight effect. It's so good. I, I don't know how he even thought of that. Uh, but you can see here. And the buildings themselves aren't even the focus of this scene really. And they're snowy and people are celebrating snow on the rooftops. And then we have these buildings in the background that don't take too much of our attention. And it looks so good. So I really hope you enjoyed this one. I sure have. And I will definitely keep on following his work because it's just so smart um, and so beautiful to look at. So thank you so much. And now it's time to wrap this video up. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Painting Masters. Really one of the most, I think, impressive artists we've had here. And for different reasons from what impressed me so far. So far, I love the impressionism of creating realism with you know by reducing details and by allowing the viewer to fill in the blanks but here it's more about imagination and inventing a, a new world or concept the one with the people on the rooftops is just amazing i love these kinds of art uh, of, of artworks and i would love actually to see them uh, in person i think they are much more special i would actually love seeing them uh, face to face maybe i'll get a chance to in the future but in any case thank you so much for watching let me know in a comment down below what other artists you want me to review. I'll be happy to review uh, more uh, works by artists that you, uh, that you appreciate. I have a big list, li big list and I'm gonna add to it more and more. So let me know. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you still haven't. And I will see you again in the next episode and in another vid real soon.